Hey everybody, this is Jonathan from Enigma Photos and I need to do more videos like this because I've been doing a lot of time-lapse footage. Last weekend I was in Utah, I was in Colorado. No, I'm going to Colorado next weekend. I was in Utah and Arizona, so I got to see Big Ben, uh, what's the name of that thing? Horseshoe Ben, and I will be, what else did I get? Big Ben. Grand Canyon. No, Big Ben, no. Okay, sorry, Big Ben was a month ago. So I've done a lot of traveling recently. Anyway. I'm going to show you today how good the Sony application on the A7R2 is for making awesome day to night time lapses. Generally what I do is I will go into the camera and actually individually change the settings as it's getting darker and that's known as the holy grail. Well, Sony has done a thing on their cameras that I don't think a lot of people realize how good it is and they put an app on there where you can do sunsets, what else can you do? You can just do normal time lapses, Sunrise. sunrises, everything. So we're going to test out the sunset right now. As you can see, it's beautiful out here. We've got clouds, people, restaurant, a lot of movement, water, everything. So we've got everything we need. We're going to be using the A7S II today, even though I usually use an A7R2. A7S II is going to be a lot of fun because the dynamic range is a little bit better than my A7R2. So I'm excited to play around with that. And we're going to be using the Zeiss Battis. 18 2 point freaking 8 so it should be pretty cool so in a second i'm going to show you the settings that i'm going to put it on and then we're going to start it the cool thing about this is this is a whole tutorial so on top of that later on i will go back and record myself actually working on this footage and then you will see how awesome it is afterwards hopefully if we don't screw it up so good seeing you and i'll talk to you in a minute all right as you can see i am in the app we already have it on sunset mode if I hit menu, I can go and mess with a lot of the settings. Most importantly to me is that I am shooting in RAW. I want to be able to tailor make these images the way I want to. If I shoot in JPEG, I don't get as much information and I'm not being able to pull back in the highlights and push the, uh, the shadows. So that's very important to me. Other than that, that's mainly what I fool around with. Also what's important is manual focus when doing a time lapse. You do not want the camera going back and forth trying to focus because your shots might be out of focus and focus and all that so the best thing to do is always manually focus them uh, what I'll do too is go into the application settings and you'll see that I'm going to take 600 pictures um, also my interval is going to be seven seconds I'm gonna actually bump that to eight seconds and I have the AE set on high reason being if it's set on low it will ramp the time lapse a little bit too quickly for me. When it's on high, it does it more naturally and you won't get banding, especially when you're trying to show it off in like 4K or whatever video mode you want to do once it comes to video. You want at least the less banding as possible as you can get. So we're about ready to start, so I'm going to go ahead and start it up. All right, so the camera's done taking the footage. It's a really beautiful night. Um, and now I'm going to show you what I do, um, the process that I take to achieve the final outcome, specifically a day to night time lapse using the A7S II, the Zeiss Battis 18 2.8, and using the application that you can purchase on the Sony A7S II through the Sony App Store. So here we go. So the first thing that I do is I will take insert the card into my computer of course and grab all the images that I see here which is about 580 and I will put them in a folder so let's let that copy over and I'll be right back alright now you can see I have the files in the folder on my computer exactly where I want them I already have Lightroom time-lapse open so I will go into it and I'll just refresh here to make sure that the folder shows up, and here it is. So I will go ahead and select it. And as you can see, it is going through and reading all the files. So this takes a few minutes, um, not too long, but it will tell me, it will give me a line, which you will see coming up here pretty soon, of where the exposure levels are and if it's smooth or not. The great thing about Lightroom Tile Apps that I love is that it will even out any sort of flicker or 
vast changes in exposure and, and make it really a nice, fluid, beautiful uh, transition from day to night. So I'm going to go ahead and let this finish and then I'll show you the next steps that I use within this program. All right, here we are at our starting point. So I can hit play here. And as you can see, it's pretty good. Um, the app and the camera did a pretty decent job. Uh, there's a couple of jagged lines in there that aren't smooth that I want to fix, and that's the great thing about Lightroom time lapse. But overall, um, the app did a really, really good job in making sure that it's not too jagged and it's kind of a smooth transition. Um, by itself, would this be good enough just to output? You could. But if you really want to have that really nice linear downward movement that just creates this nice, beautiful transition from your day to night, that's why I like using Lightroom Time Lapse because it will just smooth it out and make it look awesome. So the next step I'll be taking is I'll hit Keyframes Wizard. This program is great at picking keyframes because they're going to be different parts where you're going to want to adjust your individual pictures differently to achieve uh, the beautiful colors, uh, sharpness, anything that you want to do, change the um, highlights, shadows, things like that. So usually I will go ahead and let the program pick the keyframes. So I was really good at doing that. Very impressive actually. And then I'll hit save. And the next step I will do is drag it to Lightroom. Once I drag it to Lightroom, they pop up and I'll hit import and I will bring all the images in. Most importantly, the ones that I want to pay most close attention to are the keyframes. So it's going to show the full sequence as you can see here, but mainly I want the keyframes. So I'm going to let this all come in and the keyframes come up and then I'll show you what adjustments that I make on these individual four keyframes within Lightroom. All right, so now we're back. We've got the four keyframes that LR time lapse, not Lightroom time lapse. I don't know why I keep calling it Lightroom time lapse. I'm not even sure if the LR is for Lightroom, but who knows? It might be, it might not be, but anyway, the program is called LR time lapse. So a little theory behind when I do a day to night time lapse, I like to underexpose this, the picture a little bit and expose for the sky, meaning lots of times the foreground is a little bit underexposed. Well, the cool thing is the digital technology has come a long way and there are certain cameras out there that are amazing at pulling those underexposed bits back up so it looks even. Um, the camera that I use mainly, my main camera, is the Sony a7R II. And it is great for just getting that sky perfect and then pulling back that detail. And uh, it looks amazing. Um, my backup camera is the 5DSR Canon, which is not known for this its huge dynamic range, but it actually does a really good job too. So in looking at these files, they look pretty good. For example, the first one. Um, when I come in, I'm looking to make sure that the sky isn't overexposed. And it did a little bit, but we'll come back in here and see what we can pull back in. And it shouldn't be too bad. It looks like it did a, a pretty decent job. Um, that's why sometimes manual is doing a lot is a lot easier and you can do a lot better things. So you can compensate for that sky and make sure that it's not blown out. But all in all, I think this program did a pretty, pretty decent job. So the first thing I generally do is put it in the correct aspect ratio. So I'll go in here and do 16.9 and then just move around and see what looks better. So that looks like a pretty good crop here. And I will go down and remove chromatic aberration and enable lens profile. Again, we're using the Zeiss Batis 2.8. It's been out for a little bit, so shouldn't be a problem finding the profile, which there wasn't. 
So let's play around and see what we can pull back. Just messing with exposure here to check it out. And I'll blank it back. So the first thing generally when I come in is I will see how much I can bring back with the highlights. Again, it did a pretty decent job with the highlights. A little bit blown out area here. That might have been because it's funny. You forget sometimes as time goes on, the sun changes. And earlier in the year, the sun would have been above that. And it might have been better if it had actually seen the sun and it wasn't just below the apartment complex back there. So, like I said, it did a pretty decent job. Pretty decent job. Um, not really complaining too much. Brought the shadows back up a little bit. And that's generally what I do after I crop it and then put the lens corrections on it. Also, mess with white balance a little bit. It's a little orange for me. I like it to look as natural as possible. So I will drop that down a bit. And then I'll fool with the whites. Now the great thing about whites is that it can just, it can make an image pop beautifully. And there's a little trick. If you're on Mac, you can hit Alt Option, press it down, and go in here, and it will tell you when you blow it out. And as you can see, the more I push, the more blown out it is. So I want to push whites just a little bit. Looks like 18 is a sweet spot. And it just gives more a dramatic feel to the clouds and anything that's white and lighter. Same with blacks. It'll do the same thing, when, as you can see. Whoa, doesn't look too good. But it will give you an idea of where you want to be with the black. So I brought them back to, let's say, about 19. Next step I will do is clarity. So generally, I'll boost it about 20, somewhere around 20. Um, same thing with vibrance. Boost it to about 28. And then we'll go and mess with the highlights. I usually like those around 22. And then shadows, we'll drop it down, usually about negative 8, negative 10, negative 12, somewhere around then. And I have the first picture. Now, always remember, this is my style. And as you go through photography, you're going to develop your own style or what you like to see. So just because I edit it this way doesn't mean you have to edit it this way. This is just a starting point. So let you see how uh, I think in creating a scene that I want to. But this is like, it's, hey, you can do whatever you want to um, with your scenes to make them look however you want to. You might be in a different mood and want a different look. So that's all up to you and have fun with it. So we've got the first one pretty much done. So I'll go check out the second scene. And the second scene looks pretty good too. One thing that I usually do also is since I want the crop to look the same in all the pictures, I'll get the first one and hit copy. And the only thing that I want it to copy the settings are lens corrections and the crop. That's it nothing else because I like going in and individually tailoring the pictures myself and um, don't really want to copy and paste anything else so I'll go through here and paste all of these to the individual pictures so now back to the second picture looks pretty decent but I'm gonna go through and make changes like I did on the last picture. So let's see highlights, see if we can bring more drama back in to those clouds. And we did. And that looks really, really, really nice. Same thing with the shadows. Bump them up a little bit. This is a really neat scene because we got some ducks moving around. Some At some point there was a boat, people playing with balloons. It's a really nice scene. Also at this point I'll look at temperature. It's a little bit too cold. 
I like the red, so I'll keep that in there. Same thing, hold down Option with the whites. And we can see as a red, that's pushing a little bit too hard, a little too far, but it also brought out this more, so it looks nice. Same thing with the blacks. At this point, the darker it gets, I try not to push them too hard because I don't want it to darken too much, especially the areas that I wanted to bring out anyway by boosting the shadows. So I'll do my clarity around the same thing, 20. Vibrance, I want to bring out, ah, oh, that's pretty. Bring out those reds, especially along the building. The blue, beautiful sky, that looks nice. Boost my highlights again. I think around there looks good. Oh, let's try that again, there. And then the shadows. Again, don't want to crush them too hard because I want that detail there. So maybe this time around four. So that one looks good to me. All right, let's move to the third image. Again, looking pretty good. I like the way that looks. So what I'll do next is play around with my highlights a little bit. Not as severe as the first two images, won't have to, but I want to bring in a lot more of this beautiful detail with the clouds. Then I'll go in with the shadows and bring them up just a tad bit. Now another important thing to realize is even though we want this detail to come out here, these lights here are a little bit blown out. So let's go back to the highlights again. we go all the way down, we're still not recovering everything. But you know what, that's okay because the scene still looks a little, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna boost overall exposure just a hair. And then bring this down just a little bit more. And I think the scene looks pretty good. Same with the whites, we'll go in here and push them a little bit, but be careful because same thing. You have to watch in those areas where you have highlights and you don't want to blow those out. So with the whites, bring them down to about there and everything's still looking pretty good. Blacks, same thing, don't want to go too far with them, so probably won't change them that much. Clarity, backed in the 20s. Vibrance, boosted a little bit. Now, white balance, again, is important because the difference between this, which seems a little bit too orangish, doesn't look really natural to me, and this is night and day. So that's pretty much where the sky was at that time. Still have the beautiful red, oranges, but the blues, the beautiful blue and the purple coming in here. It looks gorgeous. Come down to the highlights. Put those in the 20s. There, and that looks nice. Same thing with the shadows. Drop it down to about eight. And I like the way that looks. Now the last and final image. As you can see, it's a little bit overexposed. Try to bring back in those highlights a bit to there. It's a little bit, the colors are off. Well, that's just white balance. And as it gets darker, it should be lower. And that looks pretty good. Shadows, 
Boost him just a little bit, a hair. Brings back that. And then we'll go in the whites and see where those are at. Boost them just a little bit. The blacks, don't want to go too low. Don't want to darken the scene too much. Clarity. And the 20s again for me, right there. Let's see vibrance. Push that up just a little bit. Now, usually when it gets really dark like this, I don't want to push vibrance too much because the colors are coming out and I don't want to make it yellow and orange like that. I like to keep it very similar to what it would look like. So maybe a boost of seven. Highlights up a little bit <clears throat> and shadows, excuse me, bring them down a little bit. Now, if I had done this in the Holy Grail method, I probably would have brought the exposure down a bit more. Because I actually really like it when I have neon signs like this not blown out. And I think originally when I said that I probably would have set it to underexpose a bit more in the program, that might be a good rule of thumb because even though I was able to bring in, bring back some of the highlights, they're still a little bit too blown for me. That's okay. It still should be a pretty decent looking day to night, but if you want to be like super highly technical, a little bit overblown for me, but that's all right. We're going to see what it looks like. So now that I have all of these worked on, I'll go back into library and make sure that I can see them all. I will select them all. And then I'll go back into I'll go up to the metadata and I'll say save metadata files. So once I save the metadata files, I'll go back into Lightroom time lapse. And what it'll do, I'll hit reload and it'll read those keyframes. So I reloaded them. As you can see, this all changed where I can actually see my crop and all the other information that I did the changes with. In auto transition, it's allowing the program to calculate well how it would transition those pieces that were not within the same keyframes, but the whole time lapse together and putting it all together for you. And then you hit save. And that saves all that information. Now, if you want to see it in action, all you have to do is hit visual previews. And this is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause now. And once it's done, we can play through that. All right, so Lightroom time lapse has gone in there and added all the keyframe changes to all of the pictures in the total time lapse. So and we can see a preview of that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play here. And we can see everything blended together. So it looks pretty good. So the next thing I will do is what makes this program Lightroom Time Lapse so phenomenal. And it's called Visual to Flicker. And what it will do is to smoothen out the whole transition from day to night. As you saw when I just played it, there were a little bursts there, um, a little sudden movements, sudden changes, I should say, in the transition from day to night. Well, what this program will do is smooth those out. So here's the smoothing. It's at 10. Since there were quite a few and I like it to be more even, I'm going to boost it to about 35. And I'll hit apply and I'll hit save. And at this point, it's going to go in and redo it and we'll be able to see what it looks like afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and pause again and wait for this to be done. All right, so we've let Lightroom, or sorry, LR time lapse fix any jagged curves or non smooth curve in our time lapse. And as you can see, it did a remarkable job. This thing is nice, smooth, gradual, exactly how you want a day to night to look. And we'll go ahead and play it.
and it looks pretty awesome. Nice gradual transitions, those beautiful clouds, look at that, it looks gorgeous, colors, and everything. It looks really, really, really super nice. So that's the way we want it. Let this finish playing so you get the whole idea. And now we're going to go back into Lightroom. We're going to go down here and pick Full Sequence. And now we will make sure that we select all the pictures in the sequence. Looks good. Everything selected. We'll go up to Metadata. And since LR Time Lapse went through and changed all the files, to correspond with our keyframes. Now we can make them all look the same. So we're gonna put, we're gonna uh, hit read metadata from files. And as you can see, it's going through and changing all the files to match. Which is really super cool. This is gonna take a, a minute or two. So I'm gonna come back and show you how I export it. All right, now for export. Now all of our files look great. As you can see, smooth transitions to dark. So I'll go over here, hit export. Now, I like my files to be full res, everything that I had with them, and the original size. Since this was shot with the A7S II, we need to. If we want to do 4K, then it needs to be the full original size. So what I like to do is export them as TIFFs in 16-bit and in the original size. So this is original 16-bit TIFFs. So you go in here and you will select your folder. So we want to put them here. And boom, it will export them. Again, this takes a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and pause and we'll come back when it's done exporting them into time Lightroom or LR time lapse, or you can export them into Premiere, the individual files, or depending on what you use, you can use anything you want to just to make that video file. Light or LR time lapse itself actually does an amazing job in rendering the final images into a video. So I'll show you the way I usually do it through LR time lapse and render them there. All right, we're back. Our sequence is fully rendered and we can check it out in Lightroom time lapse because this dialog will pop up and we can select the codec we do. I like ProRes. Um, this one I want to do 4K. The cool thing about Lightroom Time Lapse is you can actually put in, or LR Time Lapse is you can put in motion blur. On this one, I'll put in low. It shouldn't be too high. Um, and it's really good at smoothing out the water and making those clouds transition more magical. Uh, frame rate I'm going to do is 30. I want the quality to be ultra high. I want to get everything that I can get out of the footage that I shoot. And color sampling 444. So I'm going to go ahead and let this render. And then you'll see what we've outputted. Um, just to let you know, you can render those files. They'll go into TIFF files and the folder for you. And you can use whatever you want to to edit them. If you are a Premiere, person, you can use Premiere, if you're your Final Cut person, you can use Final Cut, um, but those files are already ready for you to render and make look beautiful and do what you want to with them. So just keep that in mind that you're not just, you're held to one program. Uh, I just use, I tend to use the LR time lapse to render out the video and then I will make edits in Final Cut or Premiere and then render them through there. So it's up to you what you want to use. Um, appreciate you taking your time to listen to this tutorial. I'm new to it, so hopefully in the future I will get better. Um, but
but let's check out and see what this footage looks like. One thing, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be happy with uh, the program. A few little tweaks there, but if you are new to time lapses and you set it up and have a beautiful scene to capture, the program will do really, really well and you'll be shocked with uh, how well you've done. So thanks, enjoy your day, and talk to you later. Thank <music> you.